Well, today we're going to look at uh, a topic that comes up from time to time on uh, various cycling discussion groups, and that is how to deactivate or disable the coaster brake on a Shimano Nexus hub. Uh, a lot of people are not fans of coaster brakes. Uh, I count myself among their number. I'm not crazy about them. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, a bike can be fitted with um, uh, rim brakes or an aftermarket hub is bought, but it turns out to be a coaster brake hub and somebody just wants to get rid of the coaster brake. And I totally get that. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, give a little demo on a couple of ways that that can be accomplished. Uh, first off, just a basic understanding of how the coaster brake works. All right, so this is the... Uh, uh, the gear assembly and the coaster brake shoes uh, fit on these rollers on the non-drive side and they ride inside the hub in that track and just uh, what happens is uh, when the ring gear is pedaled backwards uh, this rotates on the axle forces these rollers out forces the shoes against the, the hub and that's your coaster brake so, how to disable it? Well, the quick and easy way is to uh, simply remove the, the brake shoes. Just toss them out. And um, these, uh, the rollers that activate it, they're, they're in there pretty good, so they can probably stay and, and won't cause an issue. But my preferred method uh, would be to actually uh, disable it by removing the coaster brake actuating pawls. All right, so the driver, all right, so on the input side of the hub, you have the driver that, uh, you know, mounts here. That's where the cog mounts. And it has pawls that drive the gear assembly forward. All right, and it also has rear-facing pawls here that when the bike is backpedaled, the rear-facing pawls rotate the gear assembly backwards and activate the coaster brake. So my preferred method is to simply remove those pawls. Just take them out of the equation altogether and then the, the hub can be backpedaled and uh, with no interference. So these actually, they only have two pawls uh, each for uh, the forward drive and for the uh, coaster brake actuator. So removing the rear facing pawls is a different operation than removing the forward-facing pawls. The forward-facing pawls uh, just sit in a little divot in there and they're held in place by this uh, circular spring. Okay, So that's what holds them in there. But the rear-facing pawls actually uh, pivot on a pin. Now this, uh, this hub is pretty rusty so this, these pins are a little bit hard to see. But anyway, there's a pin in there that that runs on, but it does not extend all the way through. Okay, so on the back side, there's no access to the pin. But holding that pin in place is a an internal snap ring. Let's see if I'm getting a good shot of it there. Okay. So if we take a pointy object and just remove that ring. Okay. So now, <clears throat> now those pins are not obstructed and they can come out but they might need to be encouraged a little bit okay so we all right so it's starting to move let's just try a magnet here fairly strong magnet maybe that'll draw it out of there Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So we pulled that out with a magnet. And then we can take the, there's the, the spring. And I'll wrestle that out of there. And out comes the, out comes the pawl. All right. So while we were doing that, <laughs> the other paw fell out on its own without the help of a magnet. So there we go. That's that's out. 
and make sure you get the spring out you don't want that riding around in there I'll take the good old magnet to it there we go okay so now the rear facing poles are out and we can put it back together and we will have no coaster brake we can freely back pedal now it should be noted that the hub does not have to be disassembled to this degree to do this um, you have to take the internal assembly out and when you do that okay this will all be together everything's in pieces right now i'm not going to fully assemble it but uh, all you have to do is you have to take this uh, the gear carrier assembly off of the axle and that's just simply a matter of uh, removing the snap ring and then that'll lift off uh, but you don't have to remove the uh, the driver does not have to be removed from the axle assembly to do that okay so that just leaves the question of what to do with the uh, non-drive side once the internals are in and everything how it's uh, sealed up so basically uh, you know this this uh, is the, the dust cover basically uh, what keeps uh, the elements out and this is the the non-drive side cone it actually uh, acts as the uh, reaction arm mount and you know it's uh, the splines that engage the brake shoes uh, which are no longer going to be effective but anyway um, so what we want to do is you're going to need this and so you need the reaction arm uh, put on there all right so to close that up and then you know your your lock nuts and everything and go there but uh, you could you know just cut this off uh, anywhere here you don't have to have the uh, reaction arm hanging out or you can leave it there and mount it uh, you know it's it's not going to have any function but uh, you know you can leave it there if you want but anyway you you will need this uh, assembly to close up the non-drive side when you're all done so anyway that's it for now happy trails see you next time